You know, every time you're in a relationship, your partner, after a while, they have their things. Some things that, that may annoy you a little bit, but usually it doesn't go too far over the line. I've had a dog that chewed his feet before, mm-hmm. but never a husband. Hmm, a partner that literally feasts on their feet. That's today <laughs> on My Crazy Family. True. Oh, where is that? Why is that intro there? Oh, well, I'll paste it here. Hang on. My. My. Crazy. Crazy. Family. Family. My. My. Crazy. Family. family. Yeah. Feasting on feet. That's a... It's an interesting one. Uh, if you like the show, be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts and uh, leave us a review there on Apple Podcasts. In fact, we will definitely make it worth your while, won't we? Yes, we will. We are entering people in to win a $500 Amazon gift card. All we need you to do is leave us a review, screenshot that review, and send it to contest at crazyfampod.com. And we're going to enter you into a drawing to win a $500 Amazon gift card. That easy. Just to leave that review, send me the screenshot. Contest at crazyfampod.com. You can write in your story at crazyfampod.com. The form's right there. Just send it in anonymously, or you can call your story in 833-CRAY-FAM, 833-272-9326. Leave it completely uh, uh, anonymous. And we have just created our Facebook page and our group page for discussing your crazy family stories. So we'd love for you to even share them there. And we may even use them on the show. If you, uh, if you post them there, just search, uh, my crazy family, uh, or my crazy family group on Facebook and join us, uh, in that private area where we all kind of discuss this stuff. If you like the show, it's really kind of a, a must have addition to, uh, to everything that we got going on here. So search, uh, my crazy family group on Facebook and, uh, join us over there. And share your craziness. We'd love to uh, hear it. Tony and Stacy Cole with you on today's episode of the program. And I'm on cup number uh, number one, actually, of coffee, which I'm kind of proud of myself for. That's awesome. Tell us more. Well, no, I, I've been doing caffeine a lot. I go on these things of like caffeine for a while and then like no caffeine. And so I'm, I'm, I'm pulling off caffeine, but I'm replacing it with fresh juice, um, which is is good for you a lot of times tastes kind of like the earth or dirt, if you will, depending on what you're uh, you're putting in it. It's very strong, but very good for you. Uh, and uh, I don't know, I'm trying to lose weight in some way, shape or form. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of just drinking juice during the day and uh, just trying to eat better and, and I don't know, cut the caffeine, the, the bad things back, if you will. So I can't do it. I'm on my second cup of coffee today and I think it was Sunday. So a couple of days ago, I didn't have any coffee mm-hmm. and I don't think people wanted to be around me. Yeah, it was not good. Well, the the, the trick to it is you can go down, down to one cup of coffee. You notice I didn't say the ounces of the cup of coffee. Oh. So, so, you know, I have a 54 ounce big gulp of coffee going on here, which makes up for about a pot and a half. So we'll be uh, it's still one cup, though. That's that's how I'm going to. I'm kidding. It's all it, about size. It, it, is just, it? it is just an eight ounce cup of coffee. So I'm good. But uh, yeah, so uh, lots of craziness in today's episode of the the program. I'm interested to hear about the man that literally eats his feet, which (laughs) I I think I have some relatable content to that. Not from not not from anything I do, but from what I've witnessed over life uh, in in my lifetime. Um, Nothing that's currently in my world or anything. But there was some there was some gross moments uh, uh, that I've witnessed over my 40 some years. Uh, so we'll, we'll go to that, but what, what, uh, this first one, the women who, a woman rather who overheard her husband talking to his mom on the phone and like mocking his wife. Is that right? Yeah. All right. It goes like this. Yesterday I overheard my husband on the phone talking to his mother. I heard him say sarcastically. Yeah, I guess we're on a vegan diet now, which we're not. I'm cooking lots of vegetarian dishes. And I've simply cut a lot of meat out of our meals, but we're not vegetarian. And then he said, while laughing, no, I have no idea why. So you can just imagine what was on the other end of that phone call, which isn't true, by the way. Our daughter and I were right there next to him when we discussed it as a family that this was a good idea. He never expressed anything negative about it. 
In fact, he was all for the change for health reasons. So why would he try to make me sound like some kind of crazy food dictator or a weirdo? I'm absolutely hurt and a bit angry, and I I don't understand. Does he routinely mock me or make fun of me to his entire family? Is this something he does behind my back and I have no idea? Do all men do this? Do I confront him? I think this may be retaliation for me not managing his cholesterol levels as I work in the medical field. He went to the doctor recently, had labs drawn, and he found out that his cholesterol is high, and he came home and thrust his lab worksheet in my face while he just stood there. I asked him what he wanted me to do with the lab work, and he reiterated that it is his lab work, and he has to know what it is, what it means, what to do about it. Well, I'm not his mommy, his doctor, or his therapist. I think he feels that since I'm a medical professional, that somehow I am responsible for these high levels since I do all of the cooking. I will not do this. I have enough to do. He sounds very codependent, uh, including onto his mom and her, where it sounds like he's still kind of a little boy in a lot of ways, but not in a cute way, not like, but more so like, in a you should have grown the fuck up and learned that you're an adult too. And you're, you're the one in charge of yourself. It's, it's no one else's job to lower your cholesterol other than you. And it sounds like the wife is already working on that with the vegetables and stuff, but you're going to complain about that to your other person you're codependent on, which is your mom. So when, when you're sitting there and you're, Number one, it's not healthy. It's not healthy to go back and forth to your mom and complain and things like that. Uh, Do all guys do that? No. Um, Do people that are very codependent and insecure and have this sort of personality do it? Yeah. Are there a lot of those people out there? Yeah. Um, I'd say it's probably the minority that doesn't act in this sort of behavior. I'd say probably the majority have this sort of behavior and it's learned and it's probably what they saw growing up and this is normal to them. So they have to somehow learn that the, they need to change their ways, which is not always the easiest thing in the world to do with people. Well, we talk a lot about mother-in-laws too. And I just wonder if there's some dynamic that the mother-in-law just brings this out in, in her son, because mm-hmm. It seemed like he might have been on board for this oh, until he yeah. got to talking to his mom. And then it's like, yeah, we're probably all doing the vegan diet. Oh, is she ever going to cook you good food? Is she ever going to do that? And, and that sort of thing is what's going on, because there's that weird dynamic sometimes with mothers and sons where the wife will never be good enough for the son. And, yeah. and and the mom will take every opportunity that she can, not to necessarily undermine the marriage, but to narcissistically point out how much better that woman believes she is than who they found. And no one's going to fit that fucking mold, according to mom. Mom will always have issues with whoever the fuck you're with. Um, but it's a matter of being the grown up and not engaging in those conversations and not bringing them to the table either. If, if you're like actively bringing mom you know, basically kelp for the sharks to feed on. Yeah. The sharks are going to feed on it. You have to have boundaries on what you do and don't discuss with your mom. And if your mom makes some sort of snarky fucking comment about your wife, it's your job now to stand up for her. Yeah. Shut that down. Yeah. I mean, unless like your wife's abusing the shit out of you or something, which it certainly doesn't sound like is going on here. it, it, It sounds more like you just need to grow the fuck up. Um, but again, these are a lot of steps. These are a lot of things. Uh, is it worth, you know, you know, making a marriage turn into hell? No, I think that some of these things sit down, have the discussion, be honest about what hurts you. See how he reacts. Some guys will go, I didn't realize that you're right. I, I do want to fix this because I don't want you to feel that way. Some guys will be like, that's how I am. And, and, and vice versa. You could, it can work either way. Uh, for men and women where this sort of thing can happen. Uh, but you you need to be honest if you don't want it to continue because this seems like a pattern of behavior that probably is what he views as normal and, and doesn't really see the uh, underlying cancer that this sort of uh, outlook can can add to a relationship. Well, that sounds like also such a an old sexist idea that, you know, the the guy is going to just 
smack talk about his wife to to the guys or whoever. I, I just don't think that's a healthy thing to do. I, why portray your wife as this this horrible creature at home that's trying to destroy you? Why can't she just be like the greatest thing that ever happened to you? you that know? should be the goal, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it. I mean, it sounds like you know these guys are adults they're mature that doesn't sound like they're like super young um i i would i think sometimes with with age comes that understanding and maturity in both men and women where they're not doing that but sometimes it doesn't especially depending on your atmosphere who you're surrounded by and what is the norm a lot of people just like to complain about shit a lot of women have their groups where all they do is kind of gossip and say this yeah. or that guys do it too just kind of in a different way uh and it's never healthy, but with maturity comes that uh, that realization that going down those roads, never healthy, never good. Didn't work in high school when you gossip about a bunch of people that are close to you. Not going to work in your marriage either if you continue to do that. And if you're, I, I think sometimes the definition of happiness that we had when we're younger, we realize when we're older, fuck. <laughs> that really wasn't that happy. No. <laughs> like uh, this, this is happy. This is what it means to like really be in love with somebody and adore them and really have no feeling of any of that. Cause I think sometimes we see these things in the people that raise us and we see kind of the, the snarkiness that goes back and forth, but it's really kind of a discontentment with one another that gets played off as kind of fun. But deep down there's this sadness we kind of go into these faces and go, well, that's just life. That's just kind of how it works. That's how it is. It doesn't have to. It really no, doesn't. It really have doesn't. To. If you if you take a look at some reruns, like Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah. Um, Frank and Marie are an absolute example of constant bitching about each other. They they had moments where they would love each other, mm -hmm. but it was all this constant, you know, you're this horrible person. And I don't, that's not healthy to be around all the time. No. I mean, do you want to live your life where you're constantly unhappy with the person you're with and you have your little moments of like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah, they mean well, but are you happy? Are either people happy? And I'm not saying get divorced over something like this, but it's just an introspection that I think everyone needs to kind of go through. Sometimes you're forced to do it through something like divorce or things of that nature uh, uh, or I don't know, whatever may trigger it. But just having the realization and sometimes you go, yes, this is what makes me happy. This is the best thing. But a lot of times I think people are just complacent and it's easier just to sit there and be discontent uh, than than try and, and seek out happiness. Well, it's it's a, an important thing too to, you know, take the person aside and say, hey, I overheard you talking to your mom. Yeah. And, you know, we we had sat down and had this discussion about how we are changing our diet a little bit. Mm -hmm. And based on what I heard you talking to your mom about, it sounds like you're upset about this. Yeah. You didn't express that to us when we talked about it. So what's going on? Have that open dialogue and be able to talk. She can't sit there and, and write into podcasts and blog sites and just complain. Uh, she needs to take action if she wants something to happen. Uh, Absolutely. And it, there's nothing wrong with getting some advice like, is this normal? Yeah, I guess. But is it healthy? No, it doesn't mean right. normal is not always healthy. So if you want it to change, you're going to have to go down that bridge of trying to change it. And that may open up some areas that you are not comfortable with, uh, that neither is comfortable with. And it may open up some questions that neither is comfortable with. And I think if it's you truly want to be happy and you truly want to be in a good, healthy relationship, both couples can say or both people can say, yeah, let's work on this. It may be kind of a mountain at first and feel overwhelming, but if you can kind of get through some of the big ones, then there'll be little ones throughout the rest of life. And you can tackle those because you've gotten over the bigger ones first. But be prepared to do it. And both people have to be prepared and want to do it. If one person doesn't and the other person really does and it is kind of a underlying tone, then you kind of got to take a moment, reevaluate yourself and decide what you want to do. If that's okay, then cool. But that's only something that you can answer. Yeah, that's a tough one. So, yeah. Ah, nothing like uh, that. Uh, and then uh, people that eat feet. Yes. So our next entry, this is about my husband. He has quit drinking. He's gone to therapy a few times, et cetera. 
Our sex life has mildly improved after a long time, but there are some things about his personal hygiene and habits that have grossed me out too much to find him sexy anymore, which I feel bad about, but I don't think I can get past it. Here we go. He barely brushes his teeth. And when he does, it's all blood. Oh my God. Okay. When he did drink, I'm sober, by the way, he would always give me a kiss when his mustache was full of beer, basically a waterfall all over my lower face. I'd get pissed And he'd always claim that he forgot. He chews his toenails. Chews his toenails? First of all, can we talk about the flexibility there? But I'll continue on with the the entry here. He scratches his balls and ass constantly. When he sleeps, he rubs those areas and sniffs and rubs it on his mustache. (laughs) That's fucking weird. Okay, he is shirtless 100% of the time at home. He wears wrinkly stained clothing out in public, even to important events like weddings or funerals. He takes a bath and or showers maybe once a week. This is the tip of the iceberg, and he has all the usual bad husband habits. He never cleans up after himself. I have to coach him how to clean anything. He's always playing video games. He makes me the responsible one in the home. After typing this out, I'm I'm as totally embarrassed as we've been together for over 10 years, and this is still going on. Sometimes seasons have to end. Television shows end. This may be one of those where, you know, you had a good run, but you know they just should have stopped renewing it a while ago. Yeah. This just sounds like a shitty human being. Some may call them trash because you really just described a very trashy human being. Are there some positive qualities there? There must be if you've stayed with them that long. But if that person has that little, I mean, it sounds like they have very little self-respect or self-care. So there's probably something going on there to begin with. I don't know. Some people I do believe are just complete slobs as well. And it's all they know. And they act like Neanderthals and they're completely happy about it. I don't always think there's something deep down that's uh, destroying someone inside that creates this. Sometimes, yes, but if this has literally been their behavior all of the time you've known them, this is their behavior. And if you enjoy living with essentially uh, an ape, um, cool. Um, I, you know, there's, there's, you can get like a nice little feeding, you know, trough or something. He'd probably be good with that. But, yeah. but if you, if you have higher standards for yourself and you'd like to live a different, uh, portion of however you all are you've been with them for 10 years i'm assuming probably close to 30s uh i don't know it could be really any age range but if you started young there um you know you have many many more good years uh stop staying with someone that is disgusting and makes you unhappy and find someone that that does conform to your standards and there's nothing wrong with having standards uh it's healthy it's good uh and 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 be happy Is this a guy who just doesn't know any better, hasn't learned any better, doesn't give a shit? What do you think is going on here? It could be he knows no better. It could be a father did the exact same shit and mom just stuck by the whole time. And this is normal. And if that's all he knows, that's all he fucking knows. But she had to have known this going in, don't you think? Well, yeah, but everybody going in a lot of times they're blinded by love or blinded by this or that. And then slowly these sort of things start you know, coming out and you realize this and that. And it's like, holy shit, I didn't realize, you know, all the underlying shit that this person had with them. And, and some things develop later on, especially if they don't really care. And this person clearly doesn't really care about a lot. Uh, or is is that oblivious or unaware of just the idea of eating toenails no. uh, and rubbing your private parts and rubbing that all over your face. I, the the one part I was going to be okay with was like, well, he scratches himself in bed. Like, okay, most guys do that when they're kind of adjusting and moving around. But if you're going to do that and rub it, then rub it all over your face. That's a whole other level of weird. What um, woman is is going to want to kiss that face? Yeah. First of all, his, his feet have been in his mouth. Mm-hmm. He's disgustingly yeah. rubbing his balls and ass and the stench of those areas on his mustache. So either he likes the smell 
Mm-hmm. Oh. There's one of two things here. Uh, I, I kind of suspect this guy is a dry drunk because he's been to therapy a few times, but not much. And those are horrible people to live with. He needs to get some help and needs to yeah. figure out uh, what sort of system is going to work for him. Because, it, I mean, it does sound like there's kind of just a deep sadness and a lot of kind of self-hate there that he doesn't express or doesn't know how to express. So uh, if you're going to stay there, he needs to, like, probably get in a group of some sort, like uh, alcohol, like AA or something. And you need to get yourself in something like Al-Anon to deal with his behavior. Uh, and try to understand what's going on for your own good uh, and understand who you are uh, so you can survive it. And that's a question of, do you want to do those things? Because without doing those sort of things, it's not, it's, you're going to be just continuing down this road of insanity. There's ways that he can certainly improve, but you need to get some tools yourself uh, to understand how you can survive this. But I've always kind of viewed relationships as, if I'm doing a lot of shit just to survive the relationship, I probably shouldn't be in that relationship. Yeah. And if she, you know, if at the base of this, she truly loves this man and wants good things for him. Going back to the the fact that when he brushes his teeth and it's all blood, you've got a serious medical concern here. It's not just disgusting. Yeah. It's, it's a health concern. Your, your oral health affects your entire body. Yep. There is, there's some bad things going on here. Um, you know, and I don't want to get too disgusting. I'm, I'm a certified vet tech. I know that yeast infections can cause a lot of, um, itching. Um, so there might be a reason that he is scratching his nutsack and his butt all the time. He might be a very, very dirty person, and there might be some overgrowths of yeast and bacteria going on here. We see it a lot in animals. Um, so this is something he needs medical care. He needs um, mental health yeah. care as well. There, there's a lot going on here, and and her health is at risk as well. Yeah, you're going to be a caretaker for being this around person. somebody whose cleanliness. Yeah, I mean it's. It, 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 my guess is he's he's probably a dry drunk, probably very depressed, hasn't taken steps needed to to get on with life and not just feel utterly depressed mm-hmm. all the time that he's not drinking. And that's probably why he has these behaviors right now. I mean, unless they've always they've always been there. I don't know. Um, but there there needs to be some help there mental health wise for him. He has to want it. You yeah. can't just say, do this, do this, do this. If he doesn't want it, it ain't going to work. So he needs to be in a place of wanting to get better and pull himself out of this depression with help. And you can be there to support him through that. And it could turn into a very lovely, even stronger relationship where you guys overcome some really dark spots. Or you can make the judgment as well of, has he always been like this even prior to quitting drinking? And if the answer is yes, that's up to you. But if I were looking back on the the pattern of behavior I would say time's up. Um, I I've given you enough chance to be a decent human being and um, I'm done. I'm going to go be happy myself, but that's something you got to look at and, and exhaust the options uh, to where you see foot. Yeah, absolutely. And I'd like to point out too, that if you're somebody as an adult that can get your, your toes into your mouth, you have some incredible flexibility and, and, Maybe channel that into a yoga practice. Maybe yeah. do something useful with that. Get your feet out of your mouth, but the stretching is a great thing. So, you know, he's he's on the road to something positive if he wants to look at it that way. I never looked at it that way. That's an interesting way of, uh, of exploring that. I remember when I was a kid. Yes, my- I read this story, Tony, and I, I thought, wow, this guy can get his toes into his mouth. That's impressive. When I was a kid, my dad would bite his toenails off. Stop it. He did. He wouldn't he wouldn't chew on them like big league chew or or anything like that. But he would and rather than using a clipper, he used his teeth. Why? I don't know. There's many things I look back on that and I go, I, I how am I your son? <laughs> I re- now I remember doing that as a little kid. Yeah, he was in he was, you know, at that time, you know, late twenties, thirties, you know, about my younger than me, and now today. But I remember being a little kid seeing that my mom would get so grossed out. Like, why are you? There's a clipper right there. Well, yeah. Yeah. It was it was something he would do. And I'm sure if I brought it up today, he'd be like, I never did that. 
Um, and my mom would be like, I don't remember that at all because there's this selective memory out. that gets blocked out. But no, I remember that. And it was just like, what the fuck? But Hang I, on a second. I'm. It, oh, yeah, actually, I can reach. OK, I just want to. I didn't know what your, was going on there. I, heard of, eh. I can reach, but I do practice yoga. But then, then that's oh, you're why trying. I thought of that. But you're if, trying you know, most this. People, most adults can't do that. Can I? <laughs> can you? Good, good thing we're not like on video right now because <laughs> that is. I, everybody, I want to challenge everybody listening. Because that is coming to the shows eventually. Thankfully, this is still just the audio days <laughs> of the program. Uh, can I reach? Uh, no, not without pulling something. Well, see, goals. It's good to be, you know, to stretch as we start to get older. We want to be more flexible. So, you know, the, there are some positive things to the story. You just have to look for them. This is where you go into um, like the yoga class, you know, where you're sitting there. Everybody's got their mats out and uh, they're uh, relaxing, uh, listening to uh, the uh, the light music off in the background and everyone's everyone's at peace everyone's at zen and then the yoga instructor comes out I see we have some new people here in the in the class today <laughs> yes hi hi welcome to our place of zen why are you joining us today well um, actually it's because I'd like to be able to chew my toenails <laughs> And I can't quite reach there. I like, see, I look at this. See, I'm like, I'm stretching right now, but I can't quite get the nail to the teeth. And so I just, close. and I just find my teeth are it's such a pleasing moment when I bite down on the toe wax and the, the nail itself. Oh. And then I feel that breakage in my teeth and I Gross. slowly peel the, peel away the nail no. from the rest of the toe. And I pick it up and I look at it and I go, Look at that. I hold it up like I just caught a giant salmon no. off in the river. And I hold it. And then sometimes I lick it a little bit. Ew! Ew! And oh I go, hmm, that's a toenail. So that's no. why I'm joining the yoga class today. I hope we can uh, learn some stretches that will help me with that. Uh, class is canceled. Everyone can go home, please. Um, and the, the authorities have been notified. Sir, please leave the building. That would be a, a fun individual. That'd be a fun yoga class. What else we got? All right. I have anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. I am working through it with a therapist, but it's a process. A couple of years ago, I was beaten by a family member. After moving in with my partner, I started to get flashbacks and panic attacks. My partner knows my history and was initially supportive. But here's where things changed. Every single one of my flashbacks or panic attacks has been triggered by my partner raising his voice and hitting or punching something in the room. The first incident happened after he screamed, speak woman, at me on the phone when I paused too long to answer. I'm going to come back to that at some point. I'm putting a little star on the story. Have, We're going to talk about that. I already have an answer. I don't even need to hear any more, but I do want to hear more. It's simply yeah, I do too. get rid of um, him, like, get out of the relationship. This is not now. now. There's no one that should ever speak to you like that. There's no redeeming quality. If that's in his lexicon of speech to you, a speak woman, get the fuck out of there. Continue Thank on. You, Tony. And I'd like to point out to the women listening. Tony just said what was on my mind. That's exactly the fucking response you need to have. When someone speaks to you in this manner, male or female, that's not how you speak to somebody you care about. Oh, my God. No. Fuck. OK, yeah. sorry. That triggered me. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. OK, I'm good. All right. His anger outbursts have caused me a panic attack five times in total. I have repeatedly told him that his anger is inappropriate and to take himself away from me when it happens. He insists that his anger is normal. No, it's not. No. Yes, punching and screaming might be normal in his world, but it's not okay when you know what it does to your girlfriend. I'm going to stop right there. That's not normal behavior. That is somebody who does not know how to control their anger. Yeah, the way that you're having panic attacks and that's how you, your body is processing, he goes and hits things and does that sort of shit. That's how he acts out because he can't deal with his emotions. 
Yeah. And he knows how it affects you. If he gives a shit about you, even if he has a problem with anger, he needs to go, oh my God, the person I love, this triggers her. I need to walk away. I need to at least leave the room and and I'll figure my shit out later, but I need to get away from her because this sets her off into a physiological response. If if you're sitting there and you're this guy that is doing these things and you can control your, you can control what you're doing. I'm sorry, this bullshit. I can't, the fuck you can't. You can control that. She's literally having a physiological response. Panic attacks you can't control when they right. come on. You're sitting there and you're doing these things by choice. You don't ask her to walk away. You get the fuck away from her and you don't ever do that around her. And you get your ass some help because that ain't good for you. And it's never going to be good for any relationship you are ever in. You will be a stained, tarnished human being if this is how you are going to act and how you're going to handle your anger the rest of your life. You Mm -hmm. are fucked unless you go and get help. So ever thinking that oh, that it's her fault, that she should deal with this better. You're a fucking idiot. And there's there's just no, there, there's no other answer. Either get your shit together and get yourself in fucking line here or get the fuck out of that relationship because yeah. you can't keep doing that to that person. And if you're in this relationship and you're, you're, you are in a pattern of abuse right now and probably mm-hmm. codependency, if you're still fucking sitting there, get out of there. There ain't no good to be had. Continue on. Yes. So it makes, let's see, um, it's not okay when you do this, when you know what it does to your girlfriend. That makes it complete, completely intentional knowing how I react. It's not that he can't change or control himself. He doesn't want to. So she, she gets this part of it. Yeah. He's acting like I'm stifling him from human emotion, turning it around on me, telling me that I'm weird for not having angry outbursts. This was my worst panic attack yet, like I was drowning and couldn't breathe. I was curled up in a ball, shaking and shouting help on repeat. His reaction was to tell me that my reaction was extreme and that he was done with it and ready to walk. He has accused me of warping the stories, misinterpreting things, and making him look like an abusive partner all the time. He He was so disgusted that he slept in the bedroom with the door closed and left me out on the sofa like I did something wrong. Mm-hmm. Now he pretend he wants to pretend that nothing has happened, but I am making plans to leave. He plans to see his sister and her new baby for a week in October. I'll be gone when he comes back. Despite Good. what he says about therapy not being helpful for me, it's opened my eyes to his behavior. I deserve to feel safe in my living space. I deserve better, and I'd rather be alone at this point. Yeah, get the fuck out of there. As quickly as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, this right now, when we are recording this, it's September. So October is a couple of weeks away. Uh, I I go now. What, what What's holding you back from just leaving during the day or the middle of the night? Or I mean, yeah. I guess maybe getting your stuff. That's probably the answer to that. Uh, but for your own well-being, I mean, it's just get the fuck out. Because this is not going to get better. This is unless he knows that he has a problem and admits it and wants to get help, which clearly he doesn't. This is going to get worse and you're putting yourself in danger. And then you can you just think of this. You're getting close. Every day you stay there, you're getting closer and closer to being on an episode of Dateline. That's yeah. Uh, be careful. And I would just say get out of there as quickly as possible. I don't see any redeeming any of this. No, I I don't either. And I I've been in a relationship Somewhat like this, mm-hmm. um, you actually knew the person. Oh, shocking! <laughs> that, yes, th- that, that um, person I, I never was, suspected. It was a, a person that we both worked with. Never suspected that person of any of any sort of anger issues. <laughs> no, this person actually, <laughs> when he would get angry, he he was he had been in the military, and I think he was a sniper. I'm not sure. Oh, Jesus, he he like won awards for his shooting ability. Mm-hmm. He would take out bullets and put people's names on them. Oh, my God. Mm hmm. Tony, your name was never on one of them, but the owner of the company was <laughs> I was just going to ask. <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. he. You know, though, he didn't like you. I know he didn't like me. Yeah, he didn't like you at all, but you never had a your name on a bullet. But somebody somebody who does something like that, mm-hmm. their mind going to a place that dark and that like torturous. Yeah. It's not good and it's not going to change. No, 
Now, I remember this individual, and, and he probably didn't like me because I I would push him to to basically do his job. Uh, and and we needed uh, some stuff th- that was to get fixed. And I remember every time I'd call, I would get hung up on. Yeah, he'd hang up on you. It's like, he wouldn't talk to you. It's like, we're off the air. Click. I, I did, like, did I get did I get disconnected or whatnot? Like, I know, I heard. Click. I'm like, okay. Like, human interaction wasn't his, uh, his forte. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And and when he did actually try to communicate with people, it there was a lot of anger and yeah. hurt and pain behind it. Yeah. But it came out just as this huge explosion. Yeah. And uh, he he went hunting uh, one weekend. Or it was during the week, actually. And I grabbed a box of hefty bags and I moved my shit out. I yeah. literally threw everything in hefty bags and got the fuck out of there. Yeah. And that was the only thing I could do was I got to get out and I got to get out now. Was and still- it was it was terrifying. It was scary. Yeah. But that's that's how you survive something like that is you get out. If you're seeing warning signs like this with a fiance, it's only going to get worse yeah. if that person becomes your spouse. Yeah. Yeah. I never understood any of that. Of I, I just I was always trying to be nice, but it was he was always such a dick to me. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and I got along with everybody yeah. there pretty much. He was the one person that was like impossible to get along with. And so I'm like, I went over, but he could be an absolutely lovely human being when his, when things were right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what attracted me to him. He, he was, he was really interesting. Um, but then this dark side would just kind of turn the corner and you're like, <gasps> yeah. You might, you, you saw something no one else saw. I mean, or, or, yeah. or, or that he never presented to anyone else. Um, I think that's more likely how it was. It was you, you saw him in a different place in time and in setting than all of us at work. Cause I think at work, he just wanted to kill all of us clearly by putting our, our names on bullets. So. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of when I, I kind of recoiled and went, I've got a problem here. I've got to get out. <laughs> It's funny because we even had to fire somebody once who threatened to kill him as a different co one of our coworkers. We had a different coworker <laughs> yeah. who actually made a threat against him. Uh, yeah. Who who knew that back home he had bullets already lined up with names? <laughs> yeah, he did. Absolutely, I forgot about that. That's right. Oh wow! So when when this happened, um, did was he still working there? Like, did you have to go to oh, work? Oh God, still- yeah. Oh, so you still saw him? At- so. What, what, what happened? Like after you got your hefty bags and got the fuck out of there, was there ever a conversation of closure or was it like, look, hi, we worked. Yes. Out. And as a matter of fact, um, I had moved into an apartment. It was a, a house that was turned into apartments, this big old mansion that had like four apartments in it. And so you, there was like no locked entry. You could just walk into the place, but yeah. then each apartment was locked. Yeah. I came home one weekend. I had been away in Minneapolis seeing my family and I came home and there was a note slipped under my door and I still have that note and it's absolutely psychotic. Really? The note was something to the effect of, I saw that you moved out, blah, blah, blah. God damn, it's cold out or something. It was like something about the weather. It was just the weirdest. And I still have it. It was written on the back of a catalog from my mailbox. He had gone into my mailbox, taken out some catalog for clothing or something. Yeah. And he wrote it on the back of the catalog. So when I opened my door, I saw that my catalog had been shoved under my door. And I thought, what, what is this doing here? Yeah. And then I turned it over and saw his writing and I still have it. It's upstairs in my bedroom in one of my drawers, because I always want that reminder of where I came from sure. and what I survived because yeah. it's really psychotic and it's really frightening, but it just shows you the way his mind works yeah. that he was furious. He was fucking angry. He was mad because I had taken um, a cell phone that we had gotten together uh-huh. and I didn't pay the bill that month. And I was, he was pissed off because, you know, he had an 800 credit rating and I'm going to fuck that up. And, I saw that you moved out and my God, the weather's cold. It was just the psychotic. What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. And I made sure to get the cell phone back to him. Um, I paid the bill. I, I just completely washed myself clean of him. 
And thankfully he never, he never did anything. He never came by the place again. He never bothered me once in a while at work. He would kind of give me a side eye, but that was it. Mm -hmm. Um, and here I am today. I, you know, I, God help me. If he hears this podcast, he's probably going to get all charged up again, but I, I, I got out of it. Did you ever have, do you think you're on a bullet? Uh, you think your name's on a bullet? Oh, I guarantee there's a mantle <laughs> with bullets with my name on it. I guarantee it because oh my God. his life was really never the same after that. He, yeah. he kind of went downhill for a little bit, yeah. um, started drinking heavily. Uh, he got into an accident and left the scene of the accident, just a lot of things that he normally wouldn't do. So I know mm-hmm. some things happened to him after, yeah. after I moved out. Cause I'm sure it was humiliating for him. Sure. I mean, it didn't have to be either. It could have just been a breakup, you know, but yeah. Gosh. So is he still around? Is he like, I've seen him. Okay. Um, I, when I used to work at my vet clinic, um, I would have to drive by the radio station to get to the vet clinic. Mm-hmm. And once in a great while I would see him. So he still does that and sort of stuff. It was awkward. Yeah. You know, our eyes would meet and it was, it, it just like this woman talking about her panic attacks, I would feel like I couldn't breathe the minute I locked eyes with him, Mm -hmm. like just this horrific fear would just wash over me. And it's been 17 years. Yeah. But just the sight of him just brings all that panic and that, that fear of something's going to happen to me. So I completely get it, but I'm telling you it, this stuff doesn't change unless somebody actively says, yeah. I, I've got a problem and I need to, to make things different. And unfortunately, that's a bridge too far for a lot of people. I mean, any, yeah. any, anybody can do that. But I think sometimes if, if it's just so you're so damaged, it, it, it's it's nearly impossible. There needs to be some sort of amazing intervention or event that that pushes that person to go. I got to change. And a lot of times it just doesn't happen. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it yeah, the, I totally remember him and he was just so awkward. He was creepy. He was scary. I was, he was intimidating too. And he was kind of a shorter guy, but you just never knew he was, you just couldn't read him. He was either going to be kind of friendly or a whole horrible asshole. There was never like, Oh, let's, I don't think I ever had a conversation with him that was like at all other than like something's broken. Can you help it? And it was very rude. Other than that, there was like never didn't communicate. Well, and I'll tell you it. I understand how people saw that, Mm -hmm. but I saw a completely different human being. I saw a very warm, um, kind, uh, compassionate human being Mm -hmm. that would come in waves and then disappear like there. I I didn't understand it because people thought I was nuts. What yeah. are you doing with this guy? And I'm like, you don't know him the way I know him. So it was this whole yeah. weird veil over the relationship that nobody understood what I was doing with him. But I saw somebody yeah. occasionally that I really, really liked. Sure. You know, you but tell nobody me, else saw it. You telling me these stories. I rem- I think we talked each other through some of this because I was going through a breakup around the same time, I think. And, yeah. and I think we were talking, I wasn't working there anymore, but I remember us talking about some of these stories and I vaguely remember the bullets, uh, and hearing yeah. you telling me that like 17 years ago, <laughs> like, right? oh yeah, I do kind of, I, I kind of remember that those convert. Yeah. God. Wow. But you know, he's somebody that could really benefit from some help because I think sure. something is going on there. And yeah. if he were able to work through it, I yeah. think people would be absolutely delighted by the human being that is under there because he's, he's really good at his job. He's really good at, at other things, um, Mm -hmm. sportsman type things. He's, he's really got a lot going for him. Yeah. There's just this sliver of darkness that overtakes everything. Yeah. And that's what people see, because I think he doesn't want people to see that, that tender side. Yeah. So nobody knows that it's there. Yeah. Very few people know it's there. Yeah. I believe you. I believe it's there. I it just, you never saw it. And that, that's the sad part with, with things like that. It's like, why, why wouldn't you, you know, you could be so much happier if you just kind of let some of this go, but I don't know, you know, trauma or things of that nature that hold people back from being able to get there. But yeah. And, and he was in the military and I don't know what he saw. I don't know yeah. if, if he just needed to put that hard shell over him at sure. all times and somehow I broke through it. Yeah. 
But I, I could totally see where a woman would be like, well, no, he's really a good person. I'm going to stay just for that little part. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I didn't see that. Yeah. No, you, myself. you, you eventually called it for what it was, but yeah, there was a long time where I'm like, I don't get this. <laughs> Like, Nobody got it. Like Trust what? me. My closest friends were yeah. like, Stace, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. I, yeah. It was, it was an odd, it was an odd time. Uh, and yeah, I think he tried to come hang out with us a few times and he would just kind of, he never liked to come. He rarely came to things like, from what I remember where it was yeah. like a group of us, but there was a few times he did, but he never really, he didn't talk. And he wouldn't engage. He would just sit there with a, a beer in his hand and stare at everybody. Yeah. It was kind of unsettling. And and I'm a, I can be a wallflower too, but it was more, it was just, it was awkward. It was very, cause he's, he's probably sitting there thinking like, like I have bullets for like seven of these people that are here right now. Well, and that's, that's a real possibility. <laughs> and he's thinking that Absolutely. and we're all just like, ah, <laughs> well, how interesting. Well, that's an, a deeper dive into, uh, into that, uh, that window. Wow. Good stories today. Uh, if you have a story that you want to share with us, uh, please do go to crazyfampod.com and uh, share your story uh, there. We would uh, greatly appreciate you. Just write it in and there you go. Or you can call our uh, phone number 833-CRAY-FAM. That's 833-CRAY-FAM. And uh, you will get uh, to just share it there in your own voice. We can disguise it if you want. Just let me know. We'd uh, We'd love to hear your crazy family story. Be sure to leave us a review there on Apple Podcasts and then send us a screenshot uh, to contest at crazyfampod.com for a chance to win that $500 Amazon gift card. Until next time, for Stacy, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to My Crazy Family. My. My. Crazy. Crazy. Family. Family. My. Crazy. Family. family.